Hello students. What I'm going to talk about today is a little bit of algebra. I'm hoping that what you see here will just complement what you learn in your math classes. You'll find that what I'm doing is not actually any different from what you learn in your math classes. It's just a slightly different way to think about things. I also hope that you remember that you can pause and rewind this video at any point if you think I'm going a little bit too fast. For a little warm-up, let's start with the idea that I have this following equation. a times b equals c divided by d. You are asked to solve for b. Most of you would look at this and say that I need to isolate b. To do that, I need to get rid of the a. I could divide by a on both sides of the equation. That allows the a's to cancel out. I have just b on the left-hand side, and you can see that I now have c divided by d times a over on the right-hand side. That is a very valid and very good way to do things. High five. Here's another way to look at things. Let's first rewrite this equation. You know that I could say b divided by 1 is the same thing as just having a b. But why stop there? Let's go ahead and say a times b divided by 1 is equal to c divided by d. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to split up this equation into four different quadrants. This is how I like to think about algebra. I like to think of things as having these four different corners. There's the numerator on the left, numerator on the right, denominator on the left, and denominator on the right. Once you have things set up in this format, you can then apply three simple rules that will allow you to do a great deal of algebra. The first rule is that we can swap the left and the right side of the equation. Now you know that we don't actually even need to have the four quadrants going to be able to do this, but it's one of the rules that we'll make use of. The second rule is that I can take both tops, that's the numerators, and I can swap those for, the, for both of the bottoms, that is the denominators. So I'm just going to flip both sides of the equation. The third rule says that any component within the box can be moved diagonally as long as it's separated by multiplication or division within the box. Now I'll admit, the part that I've highlighted here in red sounds a little bit strange and I'm going to revisit it a little bit in the future here on, a, on an example. Let's look at an example problem using this new technique. I've grabbed the same equation that we were using before and I've split it up so that I have my four different corners and my four quadrants here. This time I want to solve for b like we did before. I'm going to just take my a and using rule 3 I'm going to just move it diagonally to the bottom right hand corner. Then after that you know that I can identify the left hand side of this equation as just b which gets me to the same answer we had before. Let's look at another example now. In this example I'm going to use the same equation except this time I want to solve for d which is in the denominator on the right hand side. Anytime I solve for a variable, I want it to be in a numerator. So that's going to be one of the first steps that I take. To start, I'm still going to put it into the four quadrants so that I can work with it using my three rules. For the first step, I'm going to move the D diagonally, that's rule three, up to the left. It's going to join the A and the B. When I do this, I must leave behind a one. Don't forget that what you're really doing is you're factoring out a D here you must still have a 1 down there so that you maintain your four quadrants. Now that I have my three variables d, a, and b up in the top left, I'm going to isolate the d by removing the a and b. Again using rule 3, I'm going to move them into the denominator on the right hand side. Then you know that I can look at this equation and I can simplify the left hand side so that it just shows that d is equal to c divided by a times b. For a third example, let's still solve for d, but let's do it in a different way. This time I'm starting with my four quadrants, and I'm going to use rule two, which said that we can just flip both sides of the equation. So when I do that, notice I have a and b and c on the top here. Those are all going to go down to the bottom. Everything just flipped. Now that I've done this, I'm going to use rule one, and I'm going to flip the left and the right hand sides of the equation. I'm really only doing this because I prefer to have d on the left hand side of the equation if that's what I'm solving for. Now as a next step I'm going to move the c diagonally over to the top right of the equation. That's again rule 3. Again when I do this I must leave behind a 1 where the c was before 
And then also you'll note that I just said 1 times c is equal to c, and so I got rid of the 1 that th was there before. Now I can simplify this equation again to say d is equal to c divided by a times b like we had before. In a fourth example, let's add some complications to the mix. So this time we're still going to solve for d, except you can see that I have some addition, and I also have a squared on the d itself. I'm going to bring up rule three again that said any component within a box can be moved diagonally as long as it is separated by multiplication or division within the box. That's going to pose a little bit of a problem unless I deal with it correctly here. Let's take a look at how I might separate this equation out into its four quadrants. So recall that I want to split the equation into four quadrants. And so I've shown my quadrants here. Well, on the left hand side of the equation, I could just move the a up and I could divide it by one. That makes the left hand side look okay. But you see the plus e now poses a problem. It doesn't fit nicely into the top or the bottom as long as I follow my math rules. If you remember how to figure out a common denominator, I could rewrite this problem like this, where now I have c plus e times d squared on the right hand side in the numerator, and I have it all divided by a common denominator of d squared. Now this is technically correct, but since I'm trying to solve for d, it's not particularly helpful to me. While we're on this, let's take a look at what we can and cannot do ac according to rule three. If I wanted to, for some reason, move the C down to the bottom left, I could not do it right now because it is separated within the box by a plus sign. If that was a minus sign, it would be no different. If I wanted to move that quantity down diagonally, according to rule three, I would have to move the entire thing. So then the equation would look something like this. I'm using this as an example just to demonstrate what I mean with the wording that I used in rule three. But it's not really getting us any closer to solving for d. Let's take a step back now. This time, what I want to do is I want to subtract e from both sides of the equation. This will allow me to take a different approach to find my four quadrants. Now that I have a minus e over on the left, I can fairly easily see that I can just push it up to the numerator and divide by 1. The right hand side of the equation seems to already fit into my quadrants. Now that I have this as a starting place, I can apply some of my rules. First, I'm going to apply rule 2, and I'm going to flip top to bottom both sides of the equation. I'm doing this so that I can get d again into the numerator. Now it looks like this. Once I have this, I'm going to use rule one, and I'm going to flip from left to right both sides of the equation so that the variable I'm solving for is on the left hand side. Now I'll use rule three so that I can move the c in the denominator on the left hand side diagonally up to the top right, again leaving behind a one. Now I can simplify the left hand side of this equation to show that d squared is equal to c divided by a minus e. Then, if you recall, I can just square root both sides of the equation to get rid of the square on the left, but that leaves me with a square root on the right. For a review, one can rewrite the equation in the four-corner format. From there, you can use the three rules. Rule one says that the entire left-hand side can be swapped for the entire right-hand side. Rule two says that you can flip from top to bottom both sides of the equation, and you haven't changed anything. Rule three says that any component within a box can be moved diagonally as long as it is separated by multiplication or division within the box. Now what that really means is that if I need to move something that has a plus or a minus sign within it, I have to move the whole chunk. So if I needed to move something that had an a plus b, I would have to move the entire quantity a plus b and keep it in parentheses. Good luck and let the computer know if you got it.